Well, I guess we had to review it sometime. With a channel like this where we review undervalued horror movies, forgotten horror movies, and sometimes taboo films or so-called disturbing cinema, in a similar way to one of my other favourite channels, Horrible Reviews, we had to get around to doing this at some point. The Human Centipede, one of the popular, not cult classics, but certainly pop culture horror movies to say, oh, I'm badass, I've seen The Human Centipede and lived. Well, anyone who believes that hype clearly hasn't seen the movie, because, spoiler alert, it's nothing like it's cracked up to be. And unfortunately for super fans of the film, and I'm sure there are certain people who do love it, because that's the nature of cinema, my opinions on it are kind of similar to my opinions on Hostel. But, Hostel, I would say, is actually a more intense movie than The Human Centipede, which is kind of surprising, and if you've seen Hostel but not seen this one, first of all that seems unlikely, but you'll probably think, well, how is that possible? Because Hostel isn't exactly savage for most of the film. Well, in this one, I went into it expecting one thing, and got something totally different, because I don't even consider this to be a straight-up horror film. It's basically a crime thriller. That's what it is. Half of the film is literally a crime thriller, and the other half is almost a horror film, but not quite. The parts of conventional horror movies which The Human Centipede does have is all of the bad stuff, like dumb characters, tripping on flat surfaces, plot holes which almost ruin entire scenes, and an ending which, without spoiling anything, is way too pretentious for its own good. So what did I like about the film? Because the fact that I'm reviewing it at all would indicate that I do believe it's worth watching. That's the way it works on this channel. I don't review awful movies unless there's a specific reason. Well, there is a specific reason. In fact, there's a couple of reasons. Because I do believe that this film has some merit, especially for some people. And ironically, and this really is the weird thing, I would recommend watching The Human Centipede to people who are not experienced with horror. And that may sound like a joke, like a practical prank to do on them. It really isn't, because there is a shocking lack of gore, blood, or any kind of truly disturbing imagery in this movie. In fact, so much of it is played for comedy, either intentional or otherwise, that it totally undermines any kind of horrific or disturbing tone that it could have had. There are some people who might not be able to make it through the movie, but the vast majority of people who I know, even non-horror fans, could easily get through this movie without vomiting or running to the bathroom or anything like that. It's just not that kind of movie, and so it begs the question of why you see so many people doing these reaction videos, especially in groups, and it's granted that a group often overreacts, that's the group mentality, but still, people doing reaction videos to the movie where they're trying not to throw up, and they're making these grimace faces and shielding their eyes. I don't know what movie they're watching, but it clearly isn't this one. This is not a horrific film, that's the simple fact. And unfortunately, a lot of things, as I mentioned earlier, that it does, like a conventional horror film, are the bad stuff, like really stupid characters, and some truly awful, horrific line delivery, especially at the start of the film. There are a couple of likeable characters, there are basically four main characters, there's a Chinese guy, two American girls, and a German doctor, who is, surprise surprise, the villain. He gives a great performance, he is a great villain, and he is so much better than the film that he's in. Of course, he is in the second and third film as well, and they are considerably more depraved and actually meeting of, well, they're deserving, basically, of the acclaim that people give them. This one is simply not. Now, apart from the Doctor, there is one other character who was interesting. She's not a good character, but she's interesting, at the very least, and that is one of the American girls. She is at least the kind of character who you can follow without being overly annoyed. But even then, she gets real dumb at some points in the film. Now, I am going to get into a slight spoiler for one scene in particular. So I'm going to flash up the spoiler warning on the screen, and then for those who don't want to be spoiled, it's not really an important spoiler, but anyway, if you don't want to be spoiled, then just keep it on mute or skip forward, until that logo is gone from the screen. So, we're getting into it now. The spoiler 
for those who have seen it alongside me, is, and unless I miss something here, towards the end of the movie, a big deal is made about the fact that the three conjoined triplets find it very difficult to get up the stairs to escape from the basement. Earlier on in the film, on more than one occasion, we see them out in the garden, being trained like a dog. They're not in pain. So how exactly did they get up the stairs then? Because the guy doesn't have a lift, he doesn't have a garage door that I noticed, so unless I'm missing something major here, why did they need to go up the stairs if there was another way? And if there wasn't another way, how did they get up the stairs the first time and yet find it so difficult at the end? It's not like the guy could have helped them. So I don't really get that. It's a very big plot hole. At least from what I could see, and maybe that's deliberate, but it's very strange, especially given how drawn out that scene is when they're trying to make it up the stairs. But the spoiler warning is of course off the screen, so it's safe to come back. And as far as the rest of the film, there were definitely things which I did like, because I don't want to just dump all over the film. The things that I did like were things such as the visuals. It is shot pretty well. There are some interesting uh, camera choices, some interesting camera work. The quality of the movie looks pretty good. You can actually see what's going on even in darker moments. That's nice, that's refreshing. There's a lack of music, for instance, in the opening scene, which I personally liked. It catches my attention and it immediately made me think, hmm, maybe this movie maker, Tom Six, is actually trying to make a good movie. But then it went downhill from there, and I, I know this is supposed to be the positive side, but that's the problem with this film. For everything it does right, it does two things wrong. Even the ending itself, which again, I'm not going to spoil, it tries to be way too pretentious. And spoiler alert, this is not a movie that needs to be pretentious. This is the last movie that ever needs to be pretentious. A movie about three people being sewn together is not a time for being artsy. It's a time for being raw, intense, disturbing, and disgusting. And that brings me to another important point. The whole concept, the whole purpose of a movie like this, and the whole thing that people expect when they go into it, is to be shocked, to be disgusted, to be disturbed. And that is the biggest shortcoming of this film, because there is a surprising lack of any kind of disturbing imagery beyond some things dropped in conversation. There really isn't. There's some blood, which means virtually nothing once you've seen enough of it. There is very little gore, surprisingly, and there's not even any disgusting stuff. Pretty surprising. Very surprising, actually. I was expecting a lot more from this film. And as I name dropped at the start of the video, I am a big fan of horrible reviews here on YouTube. He reviews a lot of movies like this, supposedly disturbing cinema. And I have to agree with his thoughts on this film overall, which is the film of The Human Centipede never gets more intense than the concept of it. And that's a real shame, because if the movie delivered on the potential of how horrific it sounds, it would be one of the greatest horror movies ever made. Unfortunately, it doesn't even come close. And in fact, I personally don't even feel that this is a true horror movie. I feel it's a crime thriller. In fact, towards the end of the film, it literally is a crime thriller. It just happens to have some horrific elements in there. So overall, it's more like something such as Seven than Hostel. So if you like that, and if you want to try it out, of course you could give it a look, but as usual that does bring us to our scores, so that you can get some idea of how I would compare it to other movies, such as Hostel for instance. First of all of course we have the story and the plot, and for that I am going to give it an under par 3 out of 10. And the reason why is because although I would give the basic concept a 5, because it's more than good enough, it's a combination of two killer things. One is that the story itself and the filmmakers do not make anywhere near enough use of the great concept that they have on their hands, so I'm going to demerit a point for that. And secondly, the characters and how they work in the story and how crucial story points hinge on the stupidity of characters to a ridiculous degree takes off another point, so I'm going to have to give it a 3. As far as those aforementioned characters, I am, however, and this will surprise some people, I am going to give it a 7, which is a very high score in comparison to the story. In fact, I don't think I've ever had such a disparate score compared to the story and then the characters than this before. 
but the reason why is because almost single-handedly the Doctor himself makes certain scenes in the movie, if not the movie itself, actually worth watching. Because he is a great villain. He is genuinely creepy in the way he looks, the way he acts. He's clearly chewing the scenery, playing for the camera, but that's great. This is the exact kind of movie that justifies that. He's got a little bit of a Joker vibe going on, visually and in his performance. And it's cool to see this pure obsession from a clearly intelligent, distinguished man who's just gone over the edge. I like that, and he almost single-handedly makes the film worthwhile. Most of the other characters though, good or otherwise, are almost useless. So it shows how good he is, actually, how high that score is. As far as the visuals, the effects, well again I'm going to go under par with a 4. So not ridiculously under par, given that every movie starts at a 5 and then can go up or down, but the reason why I'm rating it a little bit under par is because on one hand, the movie itself is well shot and it does look good. But the disadvantage is that there is a total lack of the kind of gore that you want to see. There's some blood, almost no gore, in fact I can't remember a single scene of gore, that's how little impact it had, and so I just can't give it an on par score when that was the whole point and it didn't accomplish that. So just a little bit under par for that. And I do want to stress, it is a good looking film, it's pretty good, it's a lot better actually than many other horror films. As far as the audio, the soundtrack, sound effects, I'm going to give it a 5, so on par basically, and that is exactly how I feel about it. The sound design, the sound quality, the music, the soundtrack, it does what it needs to do. Nothing to write home about, but not awful either, it really is as simple as that on this occasion. And finally for the rewatchability and entertainment, which of course is always the most subjective to personal taste, I'm again going to give it a just under par 4, because there are certain very rare occasions where I might watch this movie again, but only, and this is a very strong only, if I was going to show it to someone who wanted to see what the movie was like. I would re-watch it to watch it with them and laugh at some of the stupid points. If you're talking me alone though, I don't ever plan to watch this movie again, because I've simply got better things to do. However, with that being said, I would still recommend checking it out if you are a horror fan, simply because it's a movie which is beneficial to know about. It's one of those cultural zeitgeist movies within the genre that basically you just need to see, even if you don't like it. It's a good benchmark to know what people are discussing in conversation and to know how to compare it to others. So I would recommend watching it. And as a tabulation of all five of those scores put together, I'm giving it an under par, but not awful, 2.3 out of 5. And of course the par score is 2.5, so it doesn't drop by much, in other words that's like a, a 4.6 out of 10, or a 46% if it was the tomato meter. So that gives you some idea of my personal score for The Human Centipede, first sequence. I may sometime get around to doing the second or third, I don't plan to anytime soon though, and that's my thoughts. Definitely a lot of promise, the concept had a lot to work with, but it just feels squandered. And some of the characters are genuinely infuriating, especially towards the end of the film. But overall, that's it for this particular review. Of course, I'll see you guys next time. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.